And as always, we're going to be looking for accurate context, good risk management, and always exercising good patience. Everybody who's traded has gone through periods of time where their strategy hasn't worked. Where if not a hard stop, you should reevaluate the trades you're in uh, based on time. That's what we're here for, is to put ourselves in the best success. A trading routine does that, builds that habit, lets you know what to work on, what to reflect on, and what to improve on the next day. Good morning, my Futures family, and welcome to the Market Prep for Wednesday, April the 5th. My name is John. Thanks for trusting me with your time. As always, I'm hoping if you're in the markets, things are going your way. Lots of things going on in the markets today. We're going to take a look here very shortly. And as always, remember to focus on context, risk management, and patience always first. Economic numbers this morning. The mortgage rate has dropped by four-tenths of a percent. Uh, last week, it was 6.8. Now it's 6.4. If you're looking for a home, that may be good news. The 7.15 ADP employment number came out. Last month, they revised from 242 up to 261. I don't know if it's going to matter today. They were looking for 200,000 additional non non uh, uh, to, to, uh, Let me try that again. They were looking for 200,000 private payroll jobs added. It came out only 145,000, so a little bit of a shocker there. 7.30, the trade balance came out. The trade balance has widened now to $70.5 billion. We're still waiting for the 8.45 PMI composite final, which probably won't be all that impactful. It's just a final number. 9.30, we're looking for the EIA petroleum status report. Uh, last week, we we'll, there was a draw of $7.5 million. They're looking for a draw of 2.3 million barrels. This week, the API was looking for a minus 1.8 million barrels and came out worse at minus 4.3 million barrels. So supply becoming an issue and it's showing already in pricing already this week. As far as stocks are concerned this morning, they're ready to open steady to lower as investors see recession as a higher probability. Job openings are near two-year lows and manufacturing, some are saying, are is already in recession. Traders and investors are focusing on short time frame tra treasury yields right now uh, as they have been moving lower for evidence of possible Fed rate cut, uh, rate rise pauses, not rate cuts, rate rise pauses in the near term. Crude prices again have been digesting the new level that they popped up to on Sunday night, overall looking for new information. And again, and again we see a drop in inventories that may uh, be impactful for you crude traders today, don't you think? The VIX is up 3%, 19.61, 1882, 18.82 yesterday at this time. The, uh, the dollar now lower at 101.58, was 102.2 yesterday. Getting pretty close to its three-month low in the dollar. And the yield on the 10-year down to 3.3% after 3.46% at the same time yesterday. As always, make sure you hit the lucky like button, share, comment, question, feedback, heckling, and love are always welcome here on the market forecast, everything we do here on the market prep, I should say. And um, we are uh, hoping that you will uh, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get notifications when we do go live. Today we do have group coaching. Again, my apologies for not being able to present that on Monday. There is the link to register if you're not already registered. I hope to see you there. And then after that... That is, of course, at 12.30 Central. And after that, May Coke Money, the 2 o'clock session, there is the link to join on uh, the Zoom meeting there. Of course, you'll always be able to watch uh, May Coke Money on YouTube as well. So I'm looking forward to an interesting trading day. Stock's still looking lower. Uh, gold looking higher with the weak dollar. 
We're going to take a look at this in the charts very shortly. Uh, got to say good morning to everybody. We have Shaw in the room first in the in the room. You win the prize. It was kind of funny to watch the markets as the um, ADP numbers came out. It was, do we like it? Do we is it good? Is it bad? Yeah, we're not going to know. I've got some really ominous looking clouds out my window here, starting to hear a little bit of thunder. I'm hoping that that is. Not a market indication, of course. Uh, Stephen, good morning. Jade Rooster, crowing early. My brother Rick, good morning. Love you. John, good morning. Dad's advice. Uh, Don Clemens. I always include a little bit of dad wisdom in the group coaching session. Maybe you'll join us today for that, Dad's, but dad's advice. Todd Clemens, Pete, Jason, Nasdaq, Anissa, Henry, Tom, my brother. Good to see you. I love you. Uh, Bill Phillips, Terry King, Dr. VJ, Will, Hagelmatters, Vince, v v Fred. Uh, we did actually make a little bit of money yesterday. We had a good trade and then a couple of losses. I added to the wins a little bit after make hog money yesterday just because I saw an opportunity. But no, we didn't make millions. We, we're not going to make millions without you, Fred. John, good morning. Steven, Sarah Hall, prayers and love as always to you. George Duque, good morning. Brian, J-Man, Rusty Golfer, Snowflake. Good morning, Joe. Peace to you as well. Uh, dear Dr. VJ, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> thanks. Nice color shirt. You know, whenever somebody wore nice clothes on the trading floor, they were usually just going to tell you that they needed to do laundry. Uh, good morning. Good morning, uh, Jason Shy T. Uh, new office, new shirt. Life is good. Yeah, you just uh, dress it up a little bit here on a Wednesday, I guess. Grounds Hero, freshly pressed shirt. Uh, on corporate on us. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Uh, has anyone having any issues with the feed? I am hoping that that's not the case. Dad's advice says, no, it's fine. Thank you, Robbie Crust. I, that's, you know, sometimes you know, I was with working with a couple of trading psychologists a while back. It's funny that you say that, Robbie, and having a rough time and really just, um, you know, not a happy camper. And they suggested that I just stand in the pit with a smile on my face, try and look, try and feel better from the outside in. And, you know, in a way it really worked. It's uh, kind of like when you aren't feeling that good and you put you buy a new suit and you put on that suit and all of a sudden you feel a lot better <laughs> and i hope that i trade how i look today too if i if i look that good i don't know about that but alejandro good morning trading research dan trader jason dr vj's rain uh joe thank you robin blue shirt where can i get one um you can get one at um men's warehouse you're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. <laughs> uh, Taurus Trader, uh, Ugh, no more losses. No more losses. And when you're digging a hole, one of the most important things when you find yourself in that hole is to stop digging that hole. Always be thinking about being here and available to trade tomorrow. Andy, good morning. Scott, Robert. Uh, futures legend. I don't know about that, Renos or, or Renos. Uh, uh, and uh, Robert. All right, let's uh, let's dive into the charts pretty quickly here. Too warm for the rally sweater. You know what? It's here in Chicago. It's like seventy degrees right now. I know we've got a line of storms coming at us. When I where I'm sitting, I'm looking at at uh, kind of west. Southwest, southwest, pretty much straight southwest out this window. And it is looking like we are going to get a nasty storm. So we're going to pay attention to that. Luckily, I, I live next door to a school that has a, a, it has a, a, a storm siren on it. So if the storm siren goes, me and Lacey will be down in the basement. Uh, lots of nasty weather out there. And if you do have weather coming to you, make sure you pay attention to it. Make sure you, you, you protect yourselves and your loved ones. Um, you know, stuff can be fixed. Lacey can't be. <laughs> I'll be taking care of Lacey. I'm the only one in the house, me and Lacey. She's over here on the rug looking at me like, why are you saying my name? 
What are you talking about? What are you talking about? All right, and then, and then she'll just put her head back down. All right. Same here in Massachusetts. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, there's a lot of, of kind of nasty weather. It seems kind of early in the spring for that, but. Hey, Bluebell, good morning. Good morning, Bluebell. Yeah, we'll take care of ourselves here. On the edge of value and balance. Let's take a look. As always, I like to start with the E-mini S&Ps on the daily chart. So, a couple of days ago, well, yesterday morning really, we were noticing that the auction process wasn't doing that well. We had some pretty good open interest coming up to this level. Volume fell on Monday. Open interest dropped on Monday. That was our warning shot that maybe we were going to get some sort of a digestion or a pullback. Still on, still up in the air as to whether this is going to be a digestion or a pullback. We're seeing the market coming off a little bit after the early numbers this morning. So 4170 weekly kickoff high was resistant, but in the overnight. Remember that. The market put in a recent high in the overnight. It doesn't, it tends not to like that, which is one positive nuance for continuation to the upside, but probably not today. Who knows though, right? The upside auction warning shot was heated by traders yesterday who got out of probably some longs and added into some short positions with an additional 7,200 in open interest on a little bit higher volume. So <clears throat> is this <clears throat> is this going to prove to be a reversal pattern? I mean, sort of, right? It's a bearish bearish piercing pattern. Maybe we looked higher, we opened, we looked higher, we closed lower, we even traded lower. It was an outside day. Um, so it's looking kind of like it, a more of a reversal pattern than a market that's going to turn into an area of balance. I'm just sitting here trying to look at these markets and think, what are you telling me? What are you saying to me, market? Because you, the market is giving us the information we need. It's just up to us to be able to collect and decipher what all that means. What what is all this? All these nuances telling us we're seeing the all the the recent high in the overnight. Well, I know the market doesn't like that. We ran out of, of momentum to the upside. We've added some sellers here. We're getting the opportunity to even out inventory in the medium time frame, short time frame, maybe even some of the longer time frame inventories are currently being adjusted. Take a look at the 30 minute. Uh, yes, Fred, I was th thinking the same thing. Just looking at the the 30 minute, the 4170 weekly kickoff high, which again happened in the overnight night before last. And we've got the, the weekly kickoff high from last week, 4110, that got walked through but was supportive on a return to it. So we kind of got the, the extremes of the areas that I'm going to be focusing on today right in your comment there, 4170, 4110. We have overnight inventory that is getting a little bit to the short side. Again, we're in range and we're in value. I say we're, if we were opening here, there's a less of a probability of repair from the very toothy profile that we have from yesterday. We'll look at that TPO profile here in a second. But again, we're looking at value low, the low from yesterday, and this weekly kickoff low as potential areas for execution, if only because... We can limit risk there. Again, I'm probably going to look to stay patient today because the market hasn't really changed the perception of value. If that's the case, then letting the market establish an early range can give us extremes to look for opportunities. I'm a big extreme opportunity guy. Don't like to do much in the middle and opening in the value area kind of makes me feel like we're opening in the middle. All right, 
what are we going to do? Are we going to fall into range? Are we going to continue to the downside? Or is this market just going to do what it has a tendency to sometimes do and forsake any bad news, forget about it, and continue the grind to the upside? I don't know. The important thing is to look for levels to be able to limit risk. And I think we're quickly approaching an area down here where we're going to be able to do that. Again, what is the market telling us? We got a pretty clear picture on Monday that the market was kind of running out of steam. Lost open interest, volume wasn't all that great. Overnight high, recent high, mm, that's one nuance. Pretty good dive to the downside, B-shaped profile, and hmm, now what? Well, the market's giving us an opportunity to sit back, relax, and look for opportunities as the day goes on because the market is opening in range and in value. Take a look at the TPO chart. Okay, this is without the overnight session. We had kind of a weak low here on Monday. We, the, the IB extreme is the high from yesterday. In Make Hope Money, there was, a, there was a comment that said, you know, the, if the market early in the session was setting up a P shape, like short covering, we was asking, why is everybody thinking to the short side? Well, the, the only reason I was thinking about it is because the warning shot that we got from Monday that open interest dropped on lower volume and higher price. Well, it ended up being the right thing to do. We had a one good trade. We had a couple of kind of smaller losses, but I did add to those to those profits after Make Hope Money was over yesterday just to help us kind of get the account padded again here. So double distribution trend day, IB Extreme, the high of the day. Our overnight high, back to the single TPOs here. Our overnight low, back to the single TPO excess here. Well, those are going to be kind of my initial opportunities to look for 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 executions, the extremes of the overnight. And I keep hearing myself saying, well, the, where did it go? The, oh, the recent high was in the overnight. Markets don't like that. There's still plenty of weak structure that we left down below. Naked points of control. We've got a gap here. Where's that gap? There's that gap. Couple of weak lows here. <clears throat> if the market tends to, is, is going to head that way, those will be obvious visual targets for traders. What about crude oil? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to a cup of coffee here. So crude oil, I think it's in sticker shack. That big jump up on Sunday night, it's really been having trouble getting outside of the range from that day. Crude traders just are just kind of digesting these new levels, and I'm sure I'm not, I'm not sure anybody really knows what to do. Volume has been waffling. Open interest has increased another eighteen thousand yesterday. Uh, there's been a delta divergence as well since the third, uh, the thirtieth of March. Now I want to show you something here that many of you have seen, some of you have probably not. This is what we're talking about as far as volume, open interest, and price and delta. So here's the thirtieth. Volume was low. We added 12000 in open interest. Price moved higher on negative delta and value moved higher. The 31st, volume higher. Open interest higher. Price higher. Delta negative. The 31st, the 30, well, mo Monday, volume higher. Open interest higher. Price higher. Delta negative negative. The fact that price is moving higher on increasing open interest tells us 
that longer time frame traders are accumulating longs are accumulating longs. Think about that. Now, it's not going to be a straight shot. And all of this can be wrecked if something else changes. I'm looking for the, the fact that the longer time frame accumulating longs up here is going to end up getting the short time frame traders too short. And we're going to see this market continue to the upside. Now, does anybody want to see cr more expensive crude oil? No. But as day traders, we're looking for opportunities to, to go with price changes. Here's the 30-minute chart. The market is in sticker shock. It has been jerked. It, ha it is hungover. And it is sitting on the couch, eating Burger King, watching Green Acres, going, what the hell happened and what do we do now? Look at where we are. We're sitting at settlement. Very little overnight inventory. Inside range, inside value, new information coming out today at 930. Do you think that the market is going to be kind of like that sore toe? When you have a sore toe, it's inevitable that you're going to bang it on something. And this market may bang its big toe on the EIA number today. It may be impactful. It may, be, may not be. What I'm looking at is a market that is that is digesting its new area of of price. The vat, the low, interesting. The high, interesting. Anything in the middle, I'm avoiding. Anything in the middle, I'm avoiding. You guys hear me say that quite a bit. Uh, here's the TPO chart. Let's take a look at this. So this includes the overnight. Here's Sunday night. Monday, normal variation, kind of a weak low. Tuesday, Monday night into Tuesday, yesterday, excess, excess. Last night, repair. Today, potential repair. It's a double distribution trend day yesterday. We've opened between the points of control or assumed points of control from this area of distribution of volume and time and this distribution of volume and time. Be patient. Overnight high. Look at that. Pretty much right at an assumed point of control. And overnight low. Look at that. Almost exactly at an assumed point of control from the lower distribution. The market's already been working on this repair. And I'm not going to do anything in the middle. Patience, Iago. Um... Where are we now? Ah, we're finally onto the NASDAQ. Yes, the, the storms are a brewin, right? <laughs> Green acres, right? That's what I watched when I was homesick from school or hungover. <laughs> All right, uh, NASDAQ. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Range bound, evening inventory. I think less of a less of an ominous pattern up here. The Nasdaq has been presenting as stronger. We did add thirty seven hundred in open interest yesterday, but we've got a doji. We've got very uncertain daily bars here. Lots of shadows, small bodies. What are we doing today? And there's a lot of indecision here. Look at value. Here's Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Value hasn't changed. We've come off a little bit. We've we've we're, we're evening out some inventory here just through time. What are we looking at? What is this market trying to tell me? Talk to me, market. Talk to me. Talk to me, market. Well, overnight inventory maybe a little bit to the short side still. Inside value, I'm going to try and stay patient. We got value low, value high, very narrow ranges last night. This market is, all of these markets could quite possibly be just doing some hedging and positioning for Friday's uh, ab abbreviated session, but unemployment coming out nonetheless. Patience. Sometimes the picture 
is clear and the nuances line up to one side or another. Sometimes the picture is abstract and the nuances don't stack up to any real opportunity or even reasonable hypothesis. In those cases, no position is a position. You just got to see what happens and let the trades come to you. Look at the TPO chart here. Overnight, recent high. Hmm. Normal variation day. S&P's was a double distribution, wasn't it? Yes. NASDAQ, excess low, late in the day. Excess high, IB high. IB extreme high, yes. I think 100% of our markets today had one extreme of the initial balance at one extreme. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, this normal variation, neutral day. The thing that sticks out most is still putting in higher lows, still putting in higher highs, and our overnight high in the NASDAQ is, the, is a recent high. Again, it doesn't like that. Gold. So, we have the big breakout that we've been looking for yesterday. Of course, I was busy and I missed it. I'm hoping some of you were able to take advantage of it. However, it was somewhat involved with an economic release, unfortunately. But, we added 15000 in open interest yesterday on a directional move on higher volume. I'm giving the breakout grade an A. It got an A on the breakout yesterday. Volume and open interest increased. We're going to see about a continuation grade. That's going to have to be determined, but so far I'd give it a B. The dollar continues to drag along three-month lows, and it seems like it's taking another hit move to the downside today. Upside structure remains. Um, here's the 30. So our overnight was no, absolutely no overnight inventory. The news that came out here at 7.15 was liked by gold. It is not liked by the dollar. It, it's, it, it, you have to see what the regular trading hour does with the rest of the markets, but the market is leaving value. If the market continues to leave value on volume, on participation, we have to go with it. There's a lot of space up here. A lot of space. The market did not open below the point of control, which would have possibly sent us into repair from the very toothy profile from yesterday. Take a look at this. Bing, bing, I be low. Mm -mm -mm. The number comes out, we pop, and we sit. We just absorb the new area of value, the new area of, of price. To the 730, we did gap. I don't think we did on the, on the 720 open. Let's look. The 720 open, we close the gap to the tick, to the tick rejection of lower pricing, acceptance of higher pricing. If we hold this low, I'm looking for longs. And sometimes I end up looking for longs in all the wrong places. That's just what markets do. They like to make a liar out of you. Um, let's take a look at the rest of the markets here. Here's the Euro, another breakout to the upside yesterday. It gets a B plus, I think, for the breakout for from balance here. We added 7,700 in open interest. That's the estimated number. Volume just held. Maybe we'll make it a B or a B minus. B minus for the breakout on that volume. Plenty of space upstairs. We got a long way to go before we get to weekly kickoff high here. Um, so again. This is an acceptance or 
failure above this level? Is this market going to accept? Or as my younger brother says, fail. We're going to have the next market in the same situation, the 30-year or the 10-year, I should say. We see an overnight support at last week's high. That, that to me is encouraging. Take a look at the 30. No overnight inventory. In value, in range, here's the test down to last week's high. Another test to last week's high might be an interesting opportunity for us. But again, I'm going to stay patient. Going to stay patient. Very little change in the perception of value after a double distribution trend day, leaving the initial balance at the low of the session. Another double distribution trend day, similar to gold, uh, where gold didn't really have a distribution down here, but it just hung up here and we're still hanging up here. Gold has broken out above that. The euro, not so much. What is this market trying to tell me? Take a look at the uh, tenure now. Here's another accept or fail. So far, it looks looking pretty accepting of price above last week or weekly kickoff high. We had a two-day test of it this morning. That has changed. Rates continuing to creep lower. Uh, do you think we're going to raise rates at all at the FOMC in May? It's looking less like that's going to be necessary, if you ask me. And I am not an economist. So continuation, holding upside structure, now a new breakout, a new possible continuation potential going on here. Here's where we were before the numbers when I'm sitting down here looking at these markets going, yeah, we're still holding weekly kickoff high. Now, how's the volume? How's the participation? I don't want to fight this move until we see some sort of day time frame structure. We may one time frame higher. I don't know. We still have a naked point of control up here to, to contend with, but you know, we'll see. Uh, TPO. Normal uh, double distribution trend day. Similar to gold. Pops. Chills. Weak high. Uh, gap, is it a true gap? Here's the 10 year. It is a true gap. We have not closed the gap on this week high from yesterday. Week high revisited and holding above. Mm hmm. I don't want to fight this. I don't want to fight this. I don't want to fight anything. I want to be with the party, not against. Here's the natural gas. We added 16,000 in open interest yesterday, but on low volume. Where, where did that volume, where did that open interest come in? Open interest higher. Direction unknown. Again, what is this market saying? It's been holding last week's low overall. Held it again. Added 16,000 in open interest yesterday. It looks to me like this market has trapped a whole boatload of shorts down here. And now look at what it's doing. It is unraveling that boatload full of shorts. There's the ship of fools and there's the car full of imbeciles. I think this is the ship of fools. Raining pretty good here now. Will saying the inflation <coughs> is horrible. Any delay in the terminal rate is a mistake. <coughs> well, we know that the Fed has uh, been prone to mistakes in the in the past. <laughs> Are we allowed to trade the Dow E Mini? You are allowed to trade the Dow. It's a five dollar tick. If that's what you're talking about. I don't know about the, the, I'd have to check on the Dow Micro. Welcome, Darth Buddha.
Yeah, there are storms brewing, and it's raining now. It's going to make the backyard a quagmire. Lacey loves to get dirty. Be wiping off feet for two days. <laughs> but next week, well, after today and tomorrow, I think we're supposed to get like 70 and sunny for the next week. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, true, right? The Fed made the disaster. and They're going to try and fix it. All right. Um, group coaching, make Hoke money late today. Group coaching, 1230, make Hoke money, 2 o'clock. Reflection just after that. Looking forward to seeing everybody. Have a great trading day. Let's take our deep breath. <sighs> Stay humble, grateful, and creative in your trading today. Uh, make sure you're good to yourself. Be kind to others. Say a prayer for peace. Trade well. And I'll see you at uh, 1230 for group coaching. Got a lot of questions to set up for. So we'll see you then. Trade well.